zombiechickentaco.com. I'm X8, and we're going to keep continuing on this gravestone. Uh, if you look before, we created this uh, this new new piece here, uh, the dirt. I, I I really foobarred that. That really shouldn't have been there. What we're going to do is we're going to control C that. We're going to get rid of it. And we're going to completely get it out of there because we already have it done. We really don't need that in our prefab. In our prefab, now we want to keep it pretty much solely the object we're working on, almost as if it was a model itself. So we're going to save this map without that uh, that ground. I hit the control C when that was gone. I deleted it. Now, with that saved, let's go and create a new map. And in the new map, we're going to put a miscellaneous prefab by right-clicking on the 2D and going into prefabs. And we're going to go into the video 2 where I saved the grins of gravestone originally. There it is. Dun -dun -dun -dun. And we're going to double check the side. Actually, let's keep it up because we're going to hit escape. Remember that we hit control C. That puts that in the Windows clipboard. And if we hit control V, it'll put it right back into our map again. So that's that's an easy way of moving items around from one to the next. So we've got this brush here, which is which is our our little hill that we're working on. I'm, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can put a couple of gravestones on here because kind of that's what we're working with as a prefab at the moment. Um, with that all scaled out and the gravestone not sitting on the ground, uh, realism people, you start with realism right off the bat. This gravestone is standing straight up. It is looks horrid. Personally, if I were working on a zombie map, this sucker would be rotated. Now, I got into the rotate tool earlier and I showed you how to rotate it. Now some of you are like, how do I rotate it just a little bit, not 90 degrees? What you're going to do in, this is the R key. See the little pink square that it just put in the middle? And if you notice our handles, go turn into a little ball there. Um, that's your rotate tool. If The finer the grid, the finer the turn. If I put that out back to a 4 grid and I try turning it, I'm going to get a very limited range of motion. Uh, same if I were to go to the 5 grid or the 6 grid, uh, 6, 5, 6, it looks like the same. Anyway, I usually f use four, uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, and occasionally when I really want to get detailed, the 1 key or the even further, the, the tilde key right next to the 1 key goes down to the half range. We're not going to go to that right now, we're going to go to the 1 range. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if I were to make a little graveyard here, let's get out of the rotate, and plant a couple of these around. Okay, so I've got several gravestones in this uh, this graveyard of ours that we've made here. Now, they're all facing the same way. They're all the same. They're all kind of boring. Don't do this to your map, people. Um, put a little bit of time and creativity into it. It just takes a few seconds. It may seem tedious, but man, when that map is rendered, it's going to look so much better. Grab one of these. Zoom in on it. Hit the rotate tool. Rotate it just a little bit, just a little bit, not too much, because they're all kind of facing the same way and they're all in a row. But that little extra detail, that minor shift in the rotation, is 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 going to be key in, in your map versus some of the noobs that are coming out and just placing everything into straight lines and on the grid. Um, a couple other things you want to do is change your view, um, change your view to the side view and rotate that back a little bit. Now. If you look down here on the ground, you say, well, it's, it's colliding with each other. Well, that's not bad because we've got geometry that we're working with uh, and we've got a terrain that we're working with. Um, I'm going to put that back the other direction because the plaque's out front on it. Um, now, if you notice, all of the, all of the hedgestones are the same. You've got to be careful with this. You're going to want to make a couple of hedgestone um, templates when you do this because they'll, they'll all look like cookie cutters if you look at it now but you want to do a little bit of, of rotating the model so it, it doesn't look like a machine put it there but it, it's been worn by time and somebody's bumped into it and the dirt shifted and who knows a bomb went off next to it the bomb that went off next to it we take this guy and we rotate it on the x-axis there we go and then we put that on the ground and see in this instance you would probably want to see the bottom of that. That's not going to be displayed because that's in our prefab and you might want to make a separate prefab as a uh, um, gravestone laying down and then you would actually block out the underside of that. Um, those would be all created as different prefabs because every time you edit one of these, alt page down, we're going to change the front of this face to... why can't we select that? 
there we go. Front of the face, control shift, left click. We're gonna change that to the to the brown for, for giggles. Now you notice how it does that. It shouldn't do that in game unless um, you chose this rust, it would do that. Uh, most the decals and with the no decal draw, it won't give you that that fading, that shimmering effect. That's what happens when uh, two two different uh, pixels occupy the same space. Uh, the, the computer has a difficulty of showing which one's which. So with every movement, it shifts back and forth. We're going to save this Control S, and we're going to go back into our main maze. If you look, that they're all doing it now. They're all the same mirror. So you would set up a different prefab for the one laying down. But for what I'm doing now. We're just going to leave it as is, and we're going to rotate the side view. We can even just uh, put it up a little bit in the ground. And I'm still showing a little bit of that cock. I'm, I'm trying to hide it, and I, I would make another prefab for that. But say it's laying down. Okay. Before I had, I had done that, uh, put the put this terrain in the bottom, and, and it looked horrible, and I cut it all out, and I just kind of edited it at, uh, of creating the terrain so I could fix it in this one. But as you can see, with a little extra detail, a little extra time, you can take these things and rotate them just a little bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be much, but just enough to that. When the person's running through here, he sees a crooked cross here, he sees a crooked cross here, not a bunch of stray crosses. I can see if everything was done concrete, you're still not going to get perfect. Um, that, that, that's cookie cutter houses of the, of the 20th century. This is, we're, we're talking about gravestones in a graveyard that have been there for a couple hundred years. Um, detail, detail, detail. Look at photo references. Uh, I believe, I don't have that anymore, I don't think. Um, the graveyard photo. Reference, reference, reference. Keep using these references. See how we have the circle around the cross? We've done a little, a few things that have, have really helped us uh, acquire some of that detail just by rotating these things just a little bit and really depending on your landscape. Now, what I want to also get into is now that I've got those out there and I have them prefabbed, uh, a lot of times what I will do, um, you guys get to see my desktop here. Desktop. And I'm going to go to Zombie Chicken Taco. Uh, I screwed that one up horribly raw. Okay, I'm going to cut that. Edit. Okay. Oh, I was going to show you how to add. Um, I was going to show you how to add some foliage. That's what I was going to do. Because these, these gravestones look fairly raw. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to put a miscellaneous model. This is the manual way of adding uh, uh, foliage. Some people do use utilities to add it for them and randomly span it and rotate and shift the, the angle of the models. Um, this is how you manually add, add it for detail, for control of your detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our raw folder. We're going to go into our raw folder and we're going to go to X models. X models. And it's under foliage. If you select one and you hit F, and then it'll take you to the F, so you want to pick foliage. They've got a pretty good extensive range of trees and, and things oops, in here that are pretty good. Now, we want to find like a bush or something. Man, I'm not finding one. I should probably plan this out a little bit better before jumping into it. A lot of trees. There we go. Some grass, grass patch. There we go. We want a grass patch. Um, with the grass patch in here, we start getting a little bit more detail. Wait a second. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be that easy to put some detail in my level, right? I mean, couldn't be that easy. As you can see, the level starts to develop very quickly with the models that, uh, that Treyarch provided. And I uh, hope you guys have fun stamping.